and welcome back for our tiebreaker matchup between Detonation Focus Me and Kaboom. The fuse is lit. One person's gonna make it through. Yeah, certainly are, and you know, Detonation Focus Me have the hard task of now regrouping to try and get to the best of five stages. They would have felt like they nearly had that game versus Cloud9, but unfortunately, you need to be able to reset and go again. Kaboom, on the other hand, that would have been nerve-wracking. You're sitting there watching a team get <laughs> so close to Cloud9 for a second time. So they must have, when that Baron Steel went over, had a mini heart attack, Riv. So now they need to probably not get over hyphy and be able to reset for this game as well. Absolutely. I think resetting the mentality is one of the biggest things. Detonation Focus Me as well. They know they're very strong. They're coming off warm from last game. So they're going to come out hot, probably trying to strike uh, very early. Yeah, it certainly could be the case. And I mean, Kaboom did take the victory earlier today. So they would certainly feel like they have the upper mm -hmm. hand. Whilst the teams are 1-1, recency does matter. And as the tournament has progressed, Kaboom have started to look a little bit more in form. I think the one member that needs to probably check himself is Chitan, because we saw in his game versus Cloud9 that he was jumping forward, buster shotting people to safety. He would have thought when he rewatched that, if he didn't save Licorice, they would have grabbed that Baron. The game right. probably would have been there. There would have been no need for this game to be played, but that doesn't matter anymore. He's a young player. His veteran teammates, you know, like Xantins, need to be able to get around him and make sure he resets well. Absolutely, as well. Good to have Rehev in that bot lane. Somebody right next to him with that veteran status that's been able to build up with Kaboom Esports. But we are in a champion select, and it is time to see who can break this tie. Pike's going to be the first ban with Camille getting taken out of the hands of Evi. Such good play last game on that to help the team start initiating fights. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see whether they can get any aggression into that bottom lane for Chitan, for Riev to be able to capitalize on. I think that when Vivid has just been able to play Tom Kench and facilitate team play, he has looked at his best, best Riv. So we'll see whether they try and force him away from that or whether, you know, potentially the Soraka level one was something that they're now thinking about. It, that, that nation focused me like that. Uh, sorry, Tom Kench, the Nocturne, a bit of the Global, the yep. Camille's out, maybe it becomes a Shen and they put a little bit more damage between Utapon and Seros. A few options there. We see that Falcaz taken away from Cheaton. Absolutely hilarious. And it is going to be the Tom Kench fan away. Wow. So I expect okay. the Urgot Instalock to come out here. Actually thinking about it, is it going to be potentially the Aatrox, because we saw Xantins actually have an impressive performance on it. Not going to be the case, and the thumbs up is there. Locked in. Feeling very good about that pick. He's going to bring Summoner Spellbook to the top side and try and give Xantins trouble here. Do they lock in top, or do they start going for something in the bot lane to make sure Chitan and Rehab have what they want? So now the big question is there, can you take something like Zyra Khan? You know, is there a duo that you're looking for? Maybe it's a jungler. Or do you feel the pressure to take Aatrox? Because maybe, you know, Evi could be swapping that Urgot around. We've seen it a little bit internationally in the mid lane. You know, potentially the fact that Aatrox can also be played in uh, multiple positions. However, they do get themselves two power picks in their own right, looking for that team fight flavor. Chitan on the Kaisa, two regular season plays. Very well known for his Tristana, but he's going to put his hands in the ladies of the bot lane, Kaisa this time. Ranger picks that up for him. It's gonna be the Ezreal Braum here. Utapon felt very good on the Ezreal, not needing safety of his team, but also, uh, and being able to play his own game. And now you feel it has to be the top lane, you know? Otherwise, the Aatrox is gonna get pinched away. You're gonna be stuck in a tank matchup. You don't want that. So it is gonna be locked in right now. So Zanshin's ooh, taking ooh. that one into the top lane. I think that both of the teams very evenly matched in strength right now. You would give the advantage to late game Kaiser, but Utapon showed how adept he is at navigating these skirmishes and team fights and being able to persist throughout that mid game. Certainly would be feeling confidence after the last performance and maybe trusting Chitan to make a couple of characteristic mistakes and overextend it. Oh. Lucian, uh, sorry, Lucian, Ezreal Braum does punish that. Kaisa Alistar for that bot. So you can kind of stop the damage, but we're waiting to see what the map plays out as now for top lane on that, I'm sorry, jungle on the each side and for that mid lane. What are they going to be able to put in the rift? Nine seconds left for Kaboom Esports here on their phase two bans. They take Sero Six away. Karma's another big play for him in the mid lane. And they may try to focus something else on the map. It's going to be Zoe going out and they leave Steel, what could be his Nocturne jungle once again. Yeah, I believe that's the three most played of Seros being hit there. And I think that they're acknowledging the fact that when Jinketo was playing well, this was a team that looked like they were 
in form, in yeah. rhythm. I mean, they had control of that when he was able to take the fight to Jensen. And I think that, you know, that's the respect of the LeBlanc, the respect of the Aurelia, and both of these teams kind of hinging on the mid lane picks right now. Jinkato says, Syndra, right now, I'll be taking that one. On the other side, the Karma was still left up. Saros could be able to get that inner flame working in the mid lane and he will be able to lock that in. The team gives it to him. Last pick now for the jungle, Steel. Has that Nocturne open he's been playing quite a bit of. Also looking towards the Kindred and the Xin Zhao, which are still open. Yeah, and this is gonna be a frustrating pick to deal with. I would, in, I would expect, you know, a ganking jungler to come out as well to try and support this pushing mid lane. Maybe you go towards a Gragas for Steel and see if he can get the early game rolling. Kindred, wow, that is a lot of damage. One more time coming out. Once again, kind of a strange comp to start up fight. So not saying it's bad for Detonation Focus Me, but just limiting the windows that Raz always talks about to be able to get these things started. Yeah. And facilitating Ranger's pick, you know, the last pick lock-in could be here. Don't expect that one. <laughs> Rolling balls around the rift. That never-ending snowball. Nidalee hovered here. Five seconds left for Ranger in the jungle. He's going to get Nidalee played as he roams around. Okay. That's gonna be a first, especially for the regular season plays. We do not see that in his champion pool. We always know these players play it. I'll always say that as well. Just be like, oh, it's his first time? Never. But they wanna go just as aggressive on the side of Kaboom. Yeah, I think they wanna be able to match pace in the jungle. I think they wanna be able to get the clear up nice and quick as well. Not to mention the fact that something overlooked a little bit in Nidalee's kit at times is the attack speed steroid. So if he's able to get Chitan going in that back line, if he's able to fly in there with the heal and be able to start taking people out, certainly is a possibility. He also has good lanes to play around. You know, the stun in the mid lane, the CC in the top lane that can be continuous, certainly avenues for Ranger to be able to attack when he has been good in the early game, as he has been a couple of times now against ZFM. They have looked super solid. And remember, this game is for all the marbles. This is for the shot at the best of five. So you've got to trust that both of these teams would be very confident in their picks. You have to remember Kaboom, a team that has been through those trials and tribulations with Phantons and Rehav on the bot side of the map, helping the rest of the mentality of the team through games like this, through pressured times. On the other side of the rift, Detonation Focus Me feeling very good, finally being able to represent the region of Japan in the LGL as they come on to the world stage. But who will be able to break the tie is the question. Both teams have had power surges in their plays, but also falter. Will they be able to find just the power this time around? And I think two different kinds of pressure. Kaboom trying to reclimb into groups through a best of five to reach former glory. New roster, same storied organization. Yep. While Detonation Focus Me, they are trying to do what no LJL team has ever been able to do. Such domestic dominance, but never a crack at the world championship. They get it right now. All that is standing in their way is the Brazilian lineup. And I love what we've been kind of saying is the pressure of these teams that are in the growing regions are absolutely able to put a lot of their high caliber play on, on a show here at Worlds. It's not like, oh, this is going to be another game. They might have a chance. These games are all very close and pushing some of the teams that we figured would fly through these groups all the way to the brink and possible losses. Here now, one team has to lose as the other moves forward. Detonation Focus Me versus Kaboom live on the Rift for our tiebreaker match. And Kaboom seems to be warming up. They seem to have been getting better and better as this tournament progressed. They would be coming in here thinking, you know what? We've finally found our form. We've mm -hmm. finally found our rhythm. Maybe some overconfidence as that's actually a very nice ward clear coming out of Evie there. On the hands of Chitan versus the Cloud9 lineup. But you also like that. You miss 100% of shots you don't take. He missed a couple that he did. <laughs> but a couple will eventually stick. And what is with Utapon and first item just gold stack? He is uh, raking it in, that's for sure. A good return on investment on those summoner choices. Kleptomaniac just getting tons of gold. So pretty same starts around the board, except for that Doran shield up top. And the talisman for Hunter's Machete, obviously, for our junglers. A big hit from Xantez, but shielded. Not a problem, as nothing happens. It feels good. You fly through the air, and you're like, ah, oh, not so much. Yeah, a little certainly. bit of rats. Certainly a fun champion. If we see a couple <laughs> of Ares go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, short of cooldown in the bottom lane. However, because they saw Xantin's top lane, maybe they think that he's up there. Steel going for the gank. Titan already. 
or Cheetan rather, and he gets the concussive blows on him. Uh, Winter's Bite will not be locked down as they back up off of this fight. A good first flash, but could be a rinse and repeat for Cheetan there on the bot side as Utapan continues to farm and push forward. Yeah, just a flash for a flash, you could see right there. Not able to flash the headbutt coming out of Rehab. Certainly a mechanic available to steal, but not able to time that one, didn't even go for it. So the AD carry will lose the summoner spell. You can see that they really want this cake, but there's a ward in the brush. Steel stuck around for such a long time. Back towards the mid lane for him. Eyes on Ranger on the top side. They'll see he has double buffs and he's flying through his jungle. And it looks like he, uh, Evie will not be taken off guard by this. And now Ranger knows I'm in vision. I'm gonna have to play this one a little bit more safe. Steel on the bot side of the map, easily able to clear Raptors now, and he's not forced to do anything too scary. Yeah, potentially wants a repeat tank as well. Knows that Ranger could be in the top side of his jungle. Now, once again, spot him on that yep. ward. So he is sticking further towards that bottom lane. Not necessarily the most blue buff intensive champion is the Kindred. <laughs> Look but all the mana he's using. Doesn't mind having it. Right. See whether he just sticks with the aggressive clear. It looks like he wants to get some counter jungling done. So what kind of is this first move? We know Steel on the Kindred this game, quite a bit of damage, but also for Ranger, where are these junglers gonna be looking? Well, I think the big thing for Ranger is if he gets towards the jungle item, he will completely outpace what Kindred's able to do. So I think that the big thing is, you know, continue to farm up. And then Ranger, uh, sorry, Steel is all about, let's pick some strategic fights, you know? I'm gonna get myself a red smite. In the 1v1, if I dodge the initial spear, I'm gonna definitely be able to take the Nidalee down. So let's try and force some skirmishes, some 2v2s, some three, uh, 3v3s in the bottom lane. So I think it's gonna be important to keep track of where the summoner spells discrepancies are. And also how much access Seros gets to the wave. Because if you're able to just continually push Junketo in in this mid lane, He's going to struggle to be able to shove out and maintain mana, which means he's not going to have kill threat. And Zeros can start, you know, trying to help out Evi, trying to team up with Steel, as we see maybe someone like Jensen and Blabber do. Evi actually going to catch Ranger out here, deny a camp. That's pretty big. Oh, hello. So yeah, denying Grom still gets back to lane and doesn't have to miss any CS there. So great call from Detonation. Detonation Focus me to work kind of off a play, but around the map for each other here in the early part of the game. And I think that the big thing is, given the fact that we've seen Seros play this pick once and he did go towards the supportive items, yep. his build is going to be so much cheaper. So he's going to be online at a much earlier portion on this game. And he is working with a double marksman composition. Sure, Ezreal not all that reliant on attack speed, but it is certainly nice. And the fact that Kindred is able to get fantastic benefit out of it as well just means that they can force around objectives. And if he ever is able to group up with Steel with Utapon, I think the Seros could be the swing point in this matchup. Roaming around as Steel has one mark on his Kindred. Doesn't have too much marked up just yet to find anything else at this point. Soul Flare, Inner Flame, the Mantra Q there being used to push the wave as we see it. Kind of being pushed in towards Seros, but no CS discrepancy to start things off in the mid lane. Jinkato likes to be aggressive. We see him on that LeBlanc recently, but you're not going to be able to kill the Karma right away, so. Especially not a Karma with heal. Yeah, patience is going to pay off in that lane. Yeah, it's certainly going to have to be a virtue. This is the exact same setup that was run last time. And once again, Steel wouldn't exactly mind a little bit of a fight there. As soon as that spear goes wide out of Ranger, loses a lot of his potential to win those team fights. So I think that, you know, now Red Smites are picked up. Certainly is an explosive jungle matchup to track. Back to lane, teleports on the Marksman. Haven't seen that for quite a few games here in the play-ins, but is coming back for Chitan and Utapon here. And just checking in with another player tendency here, Rip, we've seen for two games in a row now that Utapon going towards the Sheen is the first item. Shows that he's not willing to concede pressure in this lane. Yep. It's gonna cost him an earlier evolve that can come out of that Mana Mune. But for right now, if there is any jungle inf influence on this lane, if they're ever able to get, you know, teleport gang set up, or potentially an early dragon around this mountain going to do so much more damage. So I love looking at individual playing player's tendency. You can see that Steel acknowledges it, starts to play a little bit more around his AD carry. And that's completely based on Utapon. He is gonna have to, have to hit those shots. The moment he starts missing, that Sheen feels like nothing. And he is making them count right now on Cheetan. They trade a bit of the same damage back, but Steel is ready, kind of wanting six before he comes back. We'll see that here off possibly red. 
get a check, uh, look at his experience bar. Well, what that means is right now they've got a push in the mid lane. You can see Seros is able to get first access to those waves. Is starting to shove in on Jinkedo. He's gone back, he's got himself his first shot. So this could start to swing a little bit if he's able to get some harass down. But if Seros just mitigates the lane and plays against the minion, should be able to consistently do that. With the Sheen, you know, you can see right now, Utapon's able to also push up in his lane, which gives this whole bottom side control over to Steel. You can do two things with that. You can either fight for vision, maybe try and invade the next blue buff, take a right. dragon. Or as soon as you get your vision set up, you know exactly where Ranger isn't. Then you pick your window of when you want to attack the top side of the map. And I think that they've shown that when Evi is on these bruiser pickups, they do like to play around him. So we'll see whether that's the case. They did have a bit of pressure towards the top side to start things off, but Evi's vision has kept him safe, allowing him to be somebody that can come back up in the fights here. Kato looking for that pressure top for Steel. As you said, that pressure top lane is going to be a big thing. And Steel stops it for now from Kaboom. Because the difference in the game that they were able to win earlier this morning was the fact that Xantins was just completely unchecked. Like, he was split pushing for days, able yep. to knock down Taurus, became a monster. You know, in one of the Baron fights that happened, he was in the side lane, just kills the Scion, takes a couple of turrets for himself, continues to march it down. So I think that, you know, that this is certainly the pick to watch. Evi prioritized the Urgot over the Aatrox, and I agree with him. Based off measuring strength at the moment, I think that Urgot does sit slightly above. But now he has to be able to prove that justification in the pick of leaving both powers up. Absolutely. What do you think gives it that edge? The versatility, the all-around map play? I think it's a fear. I think the fact that we've seen so many, you know, harpoons stick, but then to flash in to guarantee the fear afterwards, just seems to be a little bit more disruption. And executes when it's such a tank-heavy meta is very important. Obviously, not many tanks being run into this game, but it's something that we certainly saw throughout the regular season. Uh, that came through for that Urgot. It's very true. Percent damages always kind of catch your eye because they're good, but executes, those are great. We love those. <laughs> Definitely something you want on the Rift if you can afford it, and that's what you get out of the Urgot on the top side, that fear beyond death. Back down to bot, 91 to 86. As we get a, kick, a quick hit in from Riev and the Arcane Shift from Utapon for safety. So still trying to tag on a bit of that aggression, but also ensure Ranger and Jinkato have a bit of safety for this first drink. Yeah, and you have to applaud Jinkato as Utapon takes some damage here. Man. Good luck, or good thing that Arcane Shift was down. That could be Cheetan going down very fast. They're still going to get aggression onto this dragon. One more hit locks down Riev, and that'll wear off. Beautiful Soul Flare coming in. True Shot Barrage almost takes down Ranger. He's going to have to be careful. No help for Riev. Level 6 is there as he throws down the ultimate quite late. It's not going to be enough in First Blood for Steel. Huge turnaround play there. It looked like they had all of the control mid lane. They walk it down to the Dragon. But one more time, it's Chutan, the inexperienced rookie, taking too much damage underneath that turret. Riev wasn't there to save him. It costs the team everything and Dead FM strike first. The idea of the play was fantastic. Bots pushed, we have dragon priority, but like you said, too much damage taken. And you can see that Riev wanted to walk towards the dragon. He split into going through the yep. cry brush. At the same time, Qtime walked up to spell fling underneath turret. He is not in this play. And Ranger had already taken all of that free damage on the dragon. Complete disaster, but detonation focused me one more time, just capitalizing on the small mistakes. Rolling a little bit of that momentum from last game into this one. Even with that loss, they were still playing strong-minded and starting their own fights, making things happen, and not really having vision on Dragon there did not deter them from biting back. Now, one to zero, just 11 minutes in. Kaboom's still gonna stay in the face bot lane as Cheetan tries to get these threaded attacks in and knock down Utapon and Vivid. But you can just see how confident Utapon is at the moment. Yep. You know, flawless CSing under the turret. Rotating with his team. At times has been an aggressive player, but I like how conservative he has been today. You know, farming up to that two, three item mark. In these high pressure games, there is nothing worse than playing from behind. So just ensuring that even the slightly ahead yep. game has been crucial for this lineup. And again, the Kindred, as well as Karma trying to team up, not going to work this time. I was going to say as well in the Ezreal, it feels bad to even fall behind at all. Oh, so absolutely. For him to be able to stay on par but get a few assists in there to start off is beautiful. There's two kinds of Ezreals. There's the Ezreals <laughs> that you just don't care about. They shoot stuff at you. It kind of tickles a little bit. You know, they're a nuisance at best. 
And then there's the Ezreal's that like hit you with a Q and it does like three quarters of your health. <laughs> and sometimes you just don't understand how it happens. And you know, it's all about the continual CS, getting that early evolution. And that's what we saw last time out of him. So elusive, so slippery, reading the team fights brilliantly. A cerebral play coming out and looking to continue that this game. Mid lane, I don't think Steel showed there, but he was on a ward, so they have an idea. This pulverizes, the headbutt goes in, that leaves Rhea about to dry a bit, but can't really aggress with the amount of minions Kaboom is working with at this point in lane. Yeah, also the fact that Utapon thought it was going to hit him, so he preemptively buffers <laughs> the arcane shift. If that wasn't the case, potentially could have turned around for a little bit of damage, but one more time, Major this though. is Vivid picking up a heal. Like, he's not an aggressive uh, support player. He That's wants to point. play keep away with his Woo. AD carry. Just toying with each other now. And he's just guaranteeing you to pawn farm. He's saying, you know what? I'm here to be a bodyguard. I'm here to play the likes of the Tom Kenches, the Sorakas, the Braum. I will keep you safe if you promise to carry me late game. Utapon needs to come good on this, uh, on that promise in this game. He's got all of the tools. He's going to have a support Karma, a support Braum. Between him and Steel, they need yep. to be able to make it work. Heavy getting a few attacks pulled in by the chains as he starts to make his way out. And it doesn't look like Ranger will have enough time on that, but they may play this to say, let's do that again. It looks like Ranger doesn't stay for now. He'll head down towards uh, clear for a possible scuttle soon, I believe. But he's also given protection over to his mid laner. A lot of here and there, but nothing really activating for Kaboom just yet. And credit where credit shoe. I said I thought that this matchup should go in Seros's favor now that he got that first shot, that yeah. cheaper build. But the Syndra player wow. has done such an amazing job of keeping this one neutral. Dancing now flashes. Oh, forward. he flashes and Steel is there. They play the false sense of security, and that Evie might be dying, and Xantus wants it all. Cheetan comes in though, they say we need more aggression up here. Nothing's really going on in the bot side, so another teleport is called for detonation focus me to deter the turret on top from going down. This is now both marksmen to the top side of the map. Yeah, it certainly is, and that was such an aggressive play. Flashing forward, they do get the flash out of steel at the same time. The squishy jungler now needs to play carefully. However, nothing breaking right now. One kill and a dragon is all that we've had so far this game. You can see both teams very keen for some more action. Ranger reset on bot as Zantan and Evie make their way there. Teleports can still be used towards the top side. This was only the marksman coming in on that fight. And that Looks was such like an interesting play because ground. on the timing, you would think that they would want to be around bottom lane. You would yeah. think that the reset would be there for the Infernal Drake. Come back with maximum power. You know, Chitan with the boots too, with the Storm Razor kind of the mixed bag right now for the Ezreal, but this is also a place of power, you know, cooldown reduction tier, that infinite mana status. However, I think that was a surprise punch. That's why they went for the play on the top side of the map, but you got to applaud Steel, read it like a book, and was able to nullify the play. Slowly getting that vision worked on the top side of the map. We haven't seen too much action from this Nidalee pick from Ranger, usually very pronounced for the team. Has been kind of slowed down in any of his aggression. Still one to zero as it's been quiet on the home front here for both teams, really. Just a 600 gold lead in favor of Detonation Focus Me with 50 seconds on that Infernal Drake. And I think that's a good point, Rip, because he does have some good setup. You know, he's got himself an Alistar, he's got himself an Aatrox, but he just hasn't been able to find his way into the game yet. A lot of farming, that's an exhaust down. Pretty grueling fight here for Xantas as he and walked around. The Patella Piercers into the Fear Beyond Death takes down Xantas. And that is just Xantas not respecting the unsealed spellbook. He didn't have ultimate available. He used it top lane for the additional damage. Woo. Able to pick up the solo kill and now has access to that bottom lane turret. We're Huge play out of the carry of Dead FM. Waiting for that lane to break. If not to Camille, Evie can still do it on the Urga. Taking the Aatrox to town on that one. It looks like six seconds, Xantans will be back. Teleports are still up for those two, but a little pressure for DFM can be organized on the map, knowing Evie can take those fights now. Yeah, absolutely, and I now I mean, now goes back, gets double armor items, so he's gonna be even <laughs> more annoying to deal with. Cooldown armor, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Black Cleaver's still there to cut through majority of it, but I think that that is a lane that you do not want to get out of control. If you lose the side lane pressure, as we've seen so often, it does come back in a big way. One more time. Really got to respect the patience with Dead FM that they play the map. You know, they understand that they've got themselves a gold lead, but their map is not in a great position. You depot on the top side. So they just give up this dragon for free instead, trade it for some vision around the Rift Herald. And now looking for that to be their first objective. One more time. This is just uh Xantin not really respecting it. Could catch this wave, but his turret doesn't want to do it. 
Gets hit with the exhaust. Gets hit with Bunch the of minions. massive slow. Ooh. It's actually like terrifying <laughs> when you get hit by that in game. The first time it happened, I had no idea what was going on. And not only is it a like fantastic execute, but as I said, that team fight presence that it gives you with the fear is just so unexpected at times. Rift Herald, that nation focus. It looks like they'll be able to grab this. A little bit of presence from Kaboom here. Nicely done to knock Steel up, and they actually start to take control of the fight. Yeah. Just a few more hits on a Rift Herald, but it's actually sitting untouched in the middle of the fight. David's gonna throw on the stopwatch. Rehab gets out of it. How is Rift Herald even still walking around as the kills start to go? Xantis in World Ender, but he could go down as he starts to heal a little bit. And they are starting to get the kills over off the Kaboom. Xantis now about to fall. One last shot coming in for Utapon, and Cheetan makes it with a sliver of health. Feeling the wind of the true shot barrage on his back. Yeah, Cheetan sneaks into that pit, able to get the Rift Herald, gets it's out with ridiculous. his life. It did not look like it was going to be worth it. <laughs> 3,000 gold lead. Now they're looking to push the mid lane turret and the fight to go on the way of Dead FM. Saros getting a quick clear on the wave, so they have no troubles there with the next set of minions. And a bit more gold on top of that three kill fight. And we said you don't want the split pusher to get out of control. Well, guess what, Riv? Evie is completely out of control. Another fear oh, beyond yeah. death lands there. Got the fear onto Jinkedo as well. And just chunks him out of the fight. No presence coming from the two carries of Kaboom at this stage. I mean, as we take another look at it, yeah. it looks brave. You know, Unipon's going back top lane. How are they going to win this fight? But then Evie flies in. Just able to land the slow, able to continue the damage, gets a fear and then runs it straight at the mid laner and he still wants some more, he wants Xantin. Trying to get out, Flash is there for Xantin so he can get over the wall and he has vision on his side, something Evie does not even after that fight. So with that lead, they're still gonna play it safe, but five to zero now with a 4,000 gold lead at eight, 19 minutes. And this looks a little bit like how Kaboom looked during their very successful season you know carry top lane are able to exert so much pressure the rest of the map just holding it down being prepared for those team fights we're now getting towards the 20 minute mark and we've seen already how dangerous detonation focus me can be around that baron objective with priority in the lanes with the ability to push out now because of their 4,000 gold lead this is danger zone for kaboom remember this is for the shot in the best of five and kaboom right now i mean i think they're hoping for a miracle team fight I feel like it's something they could take. You have Jink or Jinkato hitting something like an unleashed power. You find Utapon once in this fight, and he is the guy that has been so elusive that allows these fights to really continue going the long haul, letting Evi come in, letting the rest of the team use the defense that they brought to the table. But that unleashed power, Cheetan being huge, could zero out Utapon right away. It's very touch and go, but that nation focus me wants to be right on that line of touch and go. Yeah, absolutely. And that means the pressure on Vivid, the pressure on Seros to be able to deny that to be able to come through. Right, you have to, to be fast. Continue these protracted fights. Something that Raz talked a lot about was the ability to push up mid lane, control topside jungle, and attack top lane <laughs> turrets. For the last game, and I think that really Dead FM have read that well. Two man Baron now starting up, and they have no idea this is happening. Good defense on Evi. He's big enough to help do this right now with Righteous Glory and the help from Black Cleaver, shredding it. Better not. The two man. Wait, it's going to be a quick walk over here from Xantin. He'll have a ward to throw down. 18, it just came back up, so he throws it in. It's all the way across the map as Ranger, so there's no smite there. Xantin's can't put himself in the Baron pit, and that is Baron at 20 minutes on the mark for Detonation Focus Me. What a heads-up play. You could see Ranger thought that he caught Zeros overextending. He acted just tasty enough. That meant the rest of the team able to capitalize on the Baron. It looked like a reset. It looked like Evie had taken top lane turret and gone towards, you know, that reset, maybe yep. towards bottom side of the map to set up for the proper Baron play. It's a brave call. You get caught on Baron at 20 minutes, you probably lose the team fight, but they don't, and they come out with everything. And to think of what happened in that fight before, in favor of Detonation Focus Me, very chaotic. It was kind of all about the Rift Herald, and it threw Kaboom for a loop. How do you not at 20 minutes have vision around that Baron area at all? Something that Veth very much fell to the wayside for them. And that nation focus me is preying on these, as we said, small mistakes that become very big for them. 
And now they have all the control in the world, you know, 5,000 gold lead. Need to make sure they don't get engaged on here. And Vivid one more time just does his job brilliantly. Scouts out Riev. Means they can just allow their carry. Evie to push in on that bottom lane, continue to accrue the gold lead. Xanthin's forcing top, focus on that split push, which can pull Detona Detonation Focus Me a little thin across the map. They, however, have Evie doing the same job on the bot side. And it's gonna be second tier mid turret taking a lot of damage as Detonation Focus Me takes it down. But on the side of DenFM, you have the Baron Reef, you have all of the favors in both sides. Sure, they're oh, yeah. losing one lane of farm, but they're winning on two sides of the map. I wonder if we even see Xanthans come back. They may say stay for one more. It's gold we need, but is it the pressure you need? Is it going to pay off? Detonation Focus Me now waiting for a wave. Not too much clear can really come here from the squad unless Jinkato starts throwing those orbs out, but barren up minions are gonna be very hard to clear. Turrets down to half health is now Abby's on the bot side. Back goes Xanthans and Kaboom may need to fight or watch their inhibitors go down. And the big thing as well is there's an objective to retreat to. So they can just take this mid lane inhibitor. They know there's not going to be any vision around the Infernal Dragon. They can finally equalize or they can just continue the pressure and try and take down number two. What strength for Detonation Focus Me from the LJL. They have tried year after year but came up short in the playoffs now. With their first representation of Japan at the world stage, they're going to try to end it on Kaboom. But Kaboom goes in to start it off on their own terms. Rehab close to going down and he will fall. World Enders there for Xantins, but he's going to come up short oh. and the team may lose him as well. Cheetan gets back to safety. Three members of Kaboom alive may be what they need to stop this game from ending. And Detonation Focus Me is looking for the Nexus. And Vivid is absolutely popping off right now, able to land a four-man ultimate. They send their top laner back. He's teleporting in. They want to end the game now. Santa Brahm spawn. He's bringing in the presence. He's bringing in the safety. Happiness for Detonation Focus Me as they take down the first Nexus turn. Seven to zero in a statement game as they look to break the tie against Kaboom Esports. And they will take down the Nexus, taking second seed in Group C. What a dominant performance across the board for the LJL representative. Beautiful. Dead FM, first time at Worlds and a statement game. And you can see they are rocked right now, Kaboom. That game was just over in a blink of an eye. One Baron, and they pushed to end. And a Baron that was snuck as well. You consider after everything that's happening, the fights that go, it was not having vision on a portion of the map that swung the entirety of the game. And both teams throughout this play-in stage pushed themselves to the max. And Detonation Focus Me found themselves coming out on top. And for the veterans of this lineup, for Utapon Seros, their coach Kazu, who's been with them since I think 2015, first time this team went internationally. That is a sweet, sweet victory. And really across the board, everyone just doing their job, playing well. Envy and Vivid, probably the two standout performances, but just an all round fantastic team performance. They kept it active, the most active team in the early game of the LGL with that 2.1 kill assist at 15. They definitely put the pressure onto Kaboom here. Kaboom wasn't even able to find one of those kills. And as you see, Steel there, very relieved as the jungler of Detonation focused me, and I'm sure they're all feeling very good about the placement here in Group C. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was down to the wire. They had such good performances about against Cloud9, but they dropped that match against Kaboom. There would have been that hint of doubt, but a solid early game, that mid-game execution was on point. Yep and a very clean victory. All right, well, to help us celebrate that win in every match from today, let's turn it over for World's Cooldown. Indeed, welcome everyone to the World's Cooldown, where we're gonna comb over today's action and look forward to our final day of the play in Groove Stage, which is tomorrow. Uh, first things first then, that Nation Focus Me does it in the end, in the tiebreaker. They left it a little late. You predicted it all though. At the beginning of the day, you said, I think, it's going to come down to a tiebreaker, and that Nation Focus Me is going to win. They used the same kind of composition they did when they started off the group. It was the uh, uh, Ardent Sensor, Athena's Unholy Grail, Double AD Carry, really respectful, and it was just pushing Kaboom. And this is Kaboom's major issues, is that 
Oftentimes, they don't get punished in being over aggressive and CB lol. This is a composition was completely preying on that. Exactly. I mean, when you see the Nidalee pick come in against this composition, I think you're so excited with how many defensive tools you have to stop the Nidalee from being able to kill you all the time. And, you know, that's unfortunate that they had to play up against that. But Detonation, so pretty happy. happy Brit, yeah, I mean, looks like. wouldn't you be your first time at Worlds and maybe what is more the first time internationally that Japan is able to advance to the knockout stage uh, of the next round of whatever they entered in for the LGL. This is absolutely huge. And remember, Yudapan and Saros have been there since the beginning. Yeah. The fact that they've gone this far, haven't found that success, and for them to make it past this stage to a best of five to prove their worth to their own country is a massive feeling for them. So mm -hmm. really kudos to them. Yeah, yeah uh, when I was speaking to some of the experts, they say, well, it's a relatively small server, a new server, so we really need that like coming of age moment uh, with not maybe as much talent as there is just ups for grabs for the other regions. And I think it shows, and you mentioned it, Yudapan has been ar around forever. Evie has been around for a very long time. They've all been grinding for this. That's exactly what I was going to say is, you know, Detonation is the old LGL team, but they do have some new players in there, and especially with Evie coming over from Rampage last year. Yeah. I, it was really cool to see him come back, and he was an absolute beast. Uh, one of the biggest members, I think, for getting them out of this, this group. Yeah, especially in this game. We will also hear from Yudapon in just a little bit, but I do want to take a look at where groups C and D land after all the action. Cloud9 and DFM are out from group C. Unfortunately, that's the end of the road for Kaboom Esports, and then G-Rex as first seed and Gambit as second out of group D, with Chaos Latin Gamers going home, unfortunately for those. Yeah, so just to speak on Kaboom, uh, a lot of expectations for them to at least get out of groups. The fact that they couldn't really shines a light in a lot of their weaknesses and just playing a slower game. Uh, people come back to this years afterwards and we just look at, of course, Chitan jumping forward on Tristana versus Cloud9. The, both these teams had great opportunities versus C9 because they showed holes, but not being able to nail it on those crucial moments. Yeah, and I don't want to kick them when they are down, but unfortunately for the CB LOL, um, I don't think it's been that positive in the last kind of year, year and a half. Of course, the epic upset over EDG at Worlds for me was kind of the last epic moment that I remember. Uh, in recent history. They have been struggling in the playing stages mostly this year also at MSI to get further. So I don't know what's next. I think they need to take a hard look at themselves. So in this team in Kaboom and then maybe the other representatives that emerge. Yeah, just more experience, I think. Because yeah. this, remember, this is the second international uh, in performance that this team, this squad has really found for themselves. And prior to this, if we're talking about INTZ having that explosive match versus EDG back then, they actually had to go through the IWCIs time and again to find themselves in mm -hmm. an opportunity. So so for me, it does mean that like 2019 is that much more interesting to watch for this squad. Yeah, I agree. I can't wait to see what goes on there in the CB LOL. I also want to take a closer look at the four teams that have qualified for the next stage of Worlds 2018. And let's take a look at how their chances are in a best of five. Let's start with Cloud9. They qualified as first seed. They went four and zero. And some of the games may have been hard for them, but you guys don't have any doubts that they will make the best of fives. Why is that? Well, I just think it depends on who they draw. We keep talking about Group B, but outside of them, I think they had pretty stiff competition in their group, all things considered. And they didn't lose a game. It got close a couple of times. Uh, but I think sometimes you saw them experimenting, trying different things. And I think, you know, when it comes down to it, they do have a pretty good system that they can use. And, you know, domestically, when that system starts to break down, they have Sven Skarin as a sub that they can bring. Oh, we haven't even seen him yet. Right, we haven't seen him yet. No one's going to know what he's playing. He, he does tend to favor the more controlled style. So you, you have to pivot really quickly when you see Sven Skarin. It can be hard for teams to do. Yeah, and the set what we saw on our screen really showcases the strength that they have. They were in a pretty tough group, and the fact that they were able to get that gold lead um, yeah, 15 minutes, but then lose so much of it, up to 25, actually speaks a lot to the fact that they, they do bring in Sven Skarin. They'll have the consistency to really round out that up. I mm -hmm. think that the fact that they have this strong of an early game speaks well to their best of fives. Yeah, I agree. We'll see who they get drawn against. And in the same group, Detonation Focus Me also qualified. Um, I'm a bit up in the air because I thought they had a wonderful day one. They showed a lot of strengths on a lot of fronts. Then they came into the day kind of abandoning the plans that worked for them. How do you think they will do with an, a day or two of practice? Remember, Worlds is tough competition. So I'm not, like, honestly sure they can get past this point, but the, we're talking about EDG, we're talking about G-Rex. It's not looking good. Sure, they're 
incredibly happy that they got to this stage, but there's so much room for growth here. And we're talking about top tier competition to really get to that point. Yeah, I think they're they're pretty big underdogs against every pool one seed that we've seen thus far. Uh, I do like the, the kind of style that they have, but sometimes it does feel like they kind of tunnel on, like this is what we're gonna play heading into this game. And uh, the biggest thing about best of fives is adaptations, of course. And we haven't really seen that. We saw the same couple comps a couple times. And, and I want to see how they react when, you know, someone beats that comp. Like, what, what do they do from there? Mm -hmm. A possible opponent might be G-Rex. They are the first seed out of Group D. Uh, they were quite a surprise to a lot of people. Third seed from the LMS. And in the end, making true on what was actually true for the LMS for a very long time. They are a major region and all of their seeds used to be competitive. And they, I think, are showing up as possibly a new strong generation. Yeah, I mean, and those stats are disgusting. I mean, almost <laughs> a two and a half thousand gold lead at 15 minutes. The major lead at 43% of the time is, is huge. And so this is a squad that I thought looked super good. And I, I love that we saw different looks out of them. We know Candy loves playing assassins yeah. in mid lane, but we also just saw plenty of Syndra and Cassio, these kind of control mages recently. And that speaks to having that flexibility in a best of five. And I wonder who they're gonna play to once they get pushed in the 2v2 mid, because honestly, the fact that they can then go towards Stitch, who had a phenomenal game today, or PK, who's a great oh, yeah. carry uh, top laner. We saw one Camille game later, like on uh, one of you know one of the group teams that right. picked it up. So I feel like if they get pushed in a best of five, but they have so many options to play through in their other solo lane. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. MT, of course, has been an absolute uh, revelation. It'd be interesting to see mid-jungle-wise where they actually have a lot of competition. We can look at who they get drawn into in the end. The second seed, though, from that group was Gambit. Yeah, that was hit and miss, I think. Uh, to be completely honest, I don't have that much faith for them going into best of fives. I feel like oh, a lot will wow. have to change. Yeah, kind of we were just showing the stats about why G-Rex looks so good. Oof. That means that Sona is on the other end of that beating. And despite being, you know, uh, one and one today, that's still a, a abysmal looking stats. Yeah, I think that Gambit right now are looking to be the weakest of the tier two teams coming into this. And I think Kira, I haven't seen this much, like this worse of a performance coming out of no. Kira specifically in yeah. the laning phase. Clear has always been one of the standout performers. And just to my point about this, he played the um, Zoe and he played LeBlanc, I believe. He played real stock standard champions and it really felt like the champions that you would look to really master, he's more of an, he either has a weirder champion pool but he hasn't really mastered. Well, he definitely so. has a weird champion pool. Yeah. I mean, his Anivia is like his go-to. Uh, and he also played two very different champions from what he played on day one when he went for the Galio insert. So it feels like he doesn't even know where he wants to go. Yeah, but that, that's what I was going to say is like the two matchups he played today were skillier matchups. Like yeah. these are things that can go either direction. And he got kind of slammed in both of them. And then the one good game he played is the Galio where he's working as a facilitator to his team, yeah. which does not speak to his individual matchups that well. And going into tougher pool one competition in the best of five, I am really concerned about how he stacks up. That being said, if he can come out as facilitator, facilitator, I think that works well for them because Lodic is looking very good. I think his AD carry as the rookie, I suppose. I mean, I know that we saw him coming in to MS. He seems like the best player on that team. He is yeah. the best player. And so we need to see a lot more of the team rallying around him. All right, let's take a look at the today's, or off today's rather, MasterCard players of the game. It's been seven games. So uh, from the first six, G-Rex, no surprise, Candy, wonderful performance, Diamond Prox, and that win from Gambit, Stitch, Sneaky, Ranger, and Licorice. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a couple of people here that were not in the first couple of days. Ranger, who tried today, who did well in the first game. Yeah, I mean, hats off to him. He was someone that we were all kind of calling out a little bit on yeah. the first day, wanting to step up. And I think he did it all day long and did get that first player of the series, of course, uh, or player of the game, excuse me, but couldn't quite figure it out. And that's uh, last game, I just, the Nidalee pick just doesn't, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think that if we're talking about consistent performance for Kaboom, it was him and Jinkedo that were doing quite well throughout the tournament. And then if we're looking about players that I really clanged on to, Licorice and uh, specifically, I know that we're going towards the top laner, so. I just want to mention that Evie was uh, the uh, player of the game for the last one. There we go. I love <laughs> the fact that he was able to get it. So like Licorice, Evie, great top laners yeah. coming out of the groups that I really enjoy from both C9 and Detonation Focus Me. There we go. And we're hoping for a lot more superstar performances of the players as we go on. And I think Avali is standing by because she caught up with Utapon to hear about their victory. Thanks, guys. I am here with Utapon, the AD carry for DFM. Congratulations on your win. This is now the furthest that Japan has ever gotten in the entire history of Worlds. So what does it mean to you to have brought the team this far? 
はい、ADC のユタポンさんに、えー、来ていただいております。えっ、ー、とプレインのラウンド2に出場ということで、あの LJL で史上初の、えー、快挙となるわけですけれども、今の気持ちはいかがなのでしょうか。そうですね。まあ最初に一勝できて、まあ結構感触が良かったんですけど、その後に三連敗かな。をしてで結局、やっぱここでまた僕たち終わっちゃうんじゃないかっていう不安もある反面途中なんかその最後の試合の途中からすごいエリさんがもう動きだとかボイスだとかですごいもう元気づけてくれてそこで勝ててもうすごいここからも頑張れるなって思えてすごい良かったなと思ってます。So we had a really very、uh, good start、uh, beating、uh, Kaboom at the first day,、uh, but then we lost three games in a row and then a team and、uh, He was very concerned about、um, maybe we're gonna lose it again.、Um, we are not gonna make it for、uh, next round. But then, Ebi,、uh, the top laner,、uh, was very cheerful and very、um, aggressive、um, in the last fight. And so, everybody brought it up t h e r、uh, morale and then came back. He did have some amazing ergot ults, but kind of going back to the LJL, historically, the LJL has not had very strong performances in any international events, but now you guys really have a chance to change that and to really draw a spotlight to your team and your region. So, what kind of an impression do you hope to leave here at Worlds? LJL ってあの今までインターナショナル国際戦であ,のあまりいい成績を残していなかったわけですけれども、まあ、これでプレインあのラウンド2で,です、ね、ノックアウトに行くということであのこういろんな海外から注目を得ることになるんですけれどもこう LJL としてです、ねこうまあ、印象というかこう残していきたい爪痕みたいなものってどんなものがありますでしょうかやっぱり今回僕たち結構意識してたのは自分たちのやりたいことをやるってことでこのプレイスタイルを見せつける世界にそれが本当に目標だったんですで今回この最初のステージ突破できたっていうことで自分たちのプレイスタイルどういうものか日本がどういうものかっていうのをすごいちゃんと見せれたかなって思ってそれがすごい良かったなって思ってます。So, LJO has a very、uh, unique play style, and uh, our uh, goal was to actually show、um, the, the play style to、uh, the world. And then、uh, by、uh, winning and then moving on to the round two, I think we have successfully made that、um, happen. Well, I'm sure a lot of fans are incredibly happy to see you guys move on. y u d a p o n thank you again so much, and best of luck to you in the upcoming stage. That's it for us here. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. I am stunned she didn't ask him about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or something. She just talks about that show incessantly. <laughs> Listen,、uh, come on. This is like Ollie's first world, and she's trying to do a good job, and you're like, you're like the devil on her shoulder to be like, talk <laughs> about anime. That is also like short sighted of you. We got to talk about the victory, man. It's more than anime to Japan. I know, I know. I'm just surprised given how she comes on my show sometimes and just talks <laughs> about anime. Take well,、over. I mean, world's your show. Come on now. <laughs> All righty. Any case,、uh, let's look forward. Great job, Ollie. Don't listen. Uh, looking forward, groups C and D are decided. So now we will look at who their possible opponents may be. This is the schedule for groups A and B. And straight off the bat, Supermassive takes on G2. I'm not nervous at all. What are you talking about? Thank God, I feel like every day you always get that first game being the one that d r a w your eyes. So 100% Supermassive versus G2. And remember, G2 have to do it twice. Yeah. So they get this victory. Congratulations. Wait until the end unless Ascension comes up、all. with a surprise victory. So Ascension is that team that you do have to watch and say, don't get slipped up a few times. The early games with Ascension have been really surprised. So, yeah, let's just talk about well, what do you guys think is going to happen? I mean, we saw it in the, in the first time where like, they were able to make a lot of plays against G2. Now, they often came at the expense of their own XP and、uh, CS, so they have to be a little smarter about it. But if like, G2 can get pulled down just a little bit more into that kind of like, Just barnyard fight, then that actually is a game that they can lose. I mean, that's basically what happened with the Kaboom story that we、yeah. talked so much about with,、uh, against Alliance way back in the days. You just get pulled into this super early game, scrappy situation. Well, I feel like it's such, a, it's such a momentum thing, right? Because that super massive game. They said that they thought Supermassive is really strong,、uh, but I think they also believe that if they play better, they definitely have a better chance, right? Because that was, they did nothing in that game. I think it's a momentum thing, because if you lose that one, then you're in that zone of, and now we have to win versus Ascension, or it might be all over. If you win that one, you're, you're golden, of course, obviously. But、uh, yeah, it's close. And I think, I don't know, I don't see Supermassive dropping a game, to be honest. Ooh, I'm gonna come in here and I think that it will go to a tiebreaker. Well,、like、then I have to, you're always right.、Uh, oh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. So、uh, I feel like, remember, the biggest point that G2 came out of that one is drafting. And what drafts meant for me for that specific game was that if they lose on that early window, they didn't have a chance.、Yeah. Like at that point, Perks was completely useless. And you have to empower your strongest player. So coming into the next series, I feel like they're gonna go for tank top,、uh, regular, you know, let's say 
Oriana. Is this something that can... Oriana, no. I, I'm just, I'm, I use that as a stock it's like, standard. You go like from a college. I went, I went to a stock standard pick that says if yeah. you, you lose your early game, that you still have an opportunity later on in the game that can give you that chance in yeah. two fights. So I definitely agree about the idea of like the win conditions. They themselves admitted that they felt pretty narrow in that yes. game. I still think I would want Winder not on a tank. Mm. I they, they had that in that game, and that was one of the reasons I thought their win conditions was hurt, because Winder getting his own leads is something that I thought was always really important for them in their wins. So not having that option felt bad. So I do agree, maybe not so like, here's a colleague, Perks, carry us, you're our main threat. Yeah. But I, I would still like to see a fair amount of aggressive picks because they are a good early game team. Yeah, I think I have to agree. You have to put stock in Perks. I mean, I think he can do it. And I yeah, maybe I'm just delusional, but I think it was a one-off <laughs> that he isn't able to do anything on Akali and all credit to Supermassive. But uh, yeah, it, it is tricky because you can't start doubting yourself in this moment. Yeah, and remember Jankos did have a great early game lead last time around. He's yeah. a great early game jungler. So if we're talking about early game, early game, early game, they should be able to get it. Comes down to how you end up going towards the team fights. So 100%. G2 for me, I think they should take that run back. But if it goes into the tiebreaker, I'm going to have super massive because they feel like a much more co sync line. For number one, then. Super, yeah, yeah, 100%. So, number one, super massive, number two, G2. What you Mark. got? I what said you got? G2, what was it yesterday? I think I said G2. Uh, I'll still say G2 for now, but I want to see how they look. T2 first? Yeah, I'll take okay. G2 for the first one. I'm holding out a little bit on the tiebreaker. Lock it in. <laughs> All right, yeah, give me G2, Super Massive. Just All right, there we go then. Uh, and then EDG, of course, Direwolves and Infinity in the other group. EDG look untouchable. Looks yes. like even with the small hiccups uh, in the later game. Yeah, that one feels pretty cut and dry where Shurn Fire should be coming back into Direwolves. They had already beaten Infinity pretty convincingly without him. This should just be a bolster of their early game, and EDG put the smack down real hard on both teams. So this group feels kind of cut and dry. I, mm. What are you going to say? My opinion is, uh, my opinion, or my thought is that there is a world in which you have this like new order uh, <laughs> uh, with the direwolves, the fact that Shurnfire was gone and all of a sudden they played kind of a different way. Triple felt kind of unable to do his thing. The bottom lane was okay. And if Shurnfire comes in, he also is a guy that does attract a lot of attention to himself and gets a lot of resources to himself to carry. And I think that is a change that they'll have to deal with that could make it worse for them just because of the change, not because Shurn Fire's a worse player, I like how you I like how you embed that because I remember, you know, experiencing the LPL, W lose yeah. Condi, and suddenly CA looks like the best mid laner there next to Rookie. I That could be a possibility. That being said, I have so much faith. I know Shurn Fire is a player, and I know how much confidence he instills in the lineup because he's the best jungler in Oceania by far. Hey, Udisov looked pretty good. He got smashed early game. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> And so this should be a major bolster to the lineup that they're going to be playing through him. And then you already have triple. We saw what Cupcake could do in the bottom lane. I think they come out second with EDG. On also, top. no disrespect to Udisov. It's really impressive to step on the world stage and uh, play those games. Right. And is EDG playing Infinity first tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. right after Supermassive. Right, which, which is what concerns me is if they just get slammed again, like how yeah. is their confidence going up against Direwolves where, yeah, if you win, you do force a tiebreaker potentially, but like... Are you really going to be able to take that mental beating again? Yeah, that is a good point. We'll see how it goes. Uh, that will do it for us here for tonight. We're going to say goodbye to Low Park and Soul and to everyone here, from myself to casters and the entire crew. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for the conclusion of Play in Groups. Our first contenders for the knockout stage will be decided as G-Rex and Gambit Esports gear up for our first game of the day. He doesn't often build towards crit. Kira could be in some trouble. But oh yeah, that's a really nice dark spear. Die out! 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 Sonic is cutting out of the way, but still actually the damage is there. Fix might be able to find his way out of there, but he's taking too much. Water grabbing so many shutdowns, and Kira, he just went straight for the base. Does it ever end? PK now trying to keep himself alive, and they get the kill over onto Nate, and it will be done. Vix going to be the next one as Nate cannot help his team. G-Rex takes down the Nexus over Chaos Land game. Unfortunately, not able to pick up a win. I didn't see it up. He actually stole it! Kaboom have to be thinking how do we let it happen again?
front line are not so hot as Antif. He's gonna go in with the Unipon. Missed the next one. Unipon trying to dance around him, but he does go down to Electrocute. What are we talking about? He's calling me a dolphin and not a fish. <laughs> Wait, that's pretty cool. I'd rather be a dolphin than a fish. Blabber goes down. Kaboom is chasing Cloud9 back to their base. And Dinkato is looking for Sneaky in the brush. He finds the kill. And Kaboom come up huge. Okay, Tristan. Okay, no. I, I blocked it. I blocked it. Can we look at it? Can we look at it? Can we look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trish, 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 Trish. Nice. Nice. We got him. We got nice. Him. Nice job, guys. Distortion over the wall. Into Flash. Into Distortion. Still in range. Oh, he tries to storm back. That is one of my favorite interactions. Now Saros could be going down as Jensen is in. Saros alive. Still throwing orbs back in from the side. Just Beautiful. Able. The Christian's Hazel pretty much in a bad spot. Steal a little too far away from the Baron. Baron. And it's going to be Saros that's able to steal it. The Guardian Angel's not going to do as much for him. And it is just a wash here for Cloud9 as they're finding all of the members they need. Pretty grueling fight here for Xanthus as he then walked around the Patella Piercers. How is Rift Herald even still walking around as the kill starts to go? Xanthus in World Ender, but he can go down. Kaita, Kaita, Kaita. Kaita, go finish it. Bissini, Bissini. Bissini, 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 Bissini, Bissini.